Before we get started, this was sent to me by a longtime viewer, Mr. Chris N., who painstakingly dug through several decades of old boxes to find this single issue of Guns and Ammo just so he could share it with me. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. And if anyone else out there wants to share anything like this with me, the Gmail account on the About tab of my channel is real, and I do infrequently check it. Now on to the article. So from the 2000 annual edition of Guns and Ammo magazine. How about a 50 caliber M1 carbine or an M14 at 338 Win Mag? By Mike Detty. Hot Rod Rifles of Le Mag. Paradigm. Webster's Dictionary defines the word as an overall concept accepted by most people in an intellectual community. Sometimes paradigms can be inhibiting. Thinking within their confines can stagnate design and innovation. Consider the M1 carbine. A short and extremely handy weapon, but one that fires around unacceptable, or maybe even worthless, depending on which World War II or Korean combat vet you speak to, for big game or serious law enforcement applications. Now consider the M1, chambered for the 45 Winchester Magnum or 50 Action Express cartridge. Here we have a very portable rifle, weighing under 5 pounds, chambered for cartridges that can be loaded over 4570 factory levels by 30%. How about an M14 semi-auto chambered for the 338 Winchester Magnum? Or maybe a CAR-15 chambered for a 45 hybrid round that would stop a charging Rhino? These are a few examples of thinking outside paradigms. The above-mentioned guns would be fun if they existed, but there's no way that they could exist, right? Wrong. Meet Tim Legendry, a big guy for you who puts big bullets in tiny guns. Tim set me straight on paradigms. Every once in a while you have to say, what if? I've long been an admirer of the tiny M1 carbine, but it fires a totally useless cartridge. But what if I could chamber it in a more serious round? It's impossible not to get caught up in Legendry's enthusiasm. His comments are sprinkled with colorful metaphors and euphemisms, and he thinks nothing of comparing himself to John Moses Browning. The only other paradigm buster this century in the firearms industry was Browning. Now there's me. He chuckled in a recent phone conversation. Legendry used my stunned silence to elaborate. Remember growing up, there was a pimply kid in your neighborhood that put a 454 in his VW? Uh-huh, I answered, still pondering the Browning sacrilege. Well, that kid was a punk, responded Legendry. I was putting lunar rockets in my VW, and I'm still the baddest kid on the block. After spending time getting to know Tim, I have forgiven him for the Browning self-comparison. But I'd have to say he's still in an orbit all of his own. But after all, how can you fault someone that has done what others thought impossible? The tunnel-like chamber of the Lamag conversion is an indication that something extraordinary has been done to this M1 carbine. Cartridges shown left to right are the 30 carbine, for which the firearm was originally chambered, and the two rounds it has successfully been converted to, the 45 Winchester Magnum and the 50 Action Express. Legendry is quick to credit the continuing education provided by his employer, General Motors. One of my night classes really piqued my interest and got me thinking outside paradigms. I'm a lifelong hunter, and I've always thought that if I found a deer rifle as light as the M1, I'd really be onto something. It didn't take long for Legendry to rough out his first prototype. Comparing a loaded 45 Winchester Magnum round to a 30 carbine round, it would seem an impossible task, but Legendry found that by using some high-tech steels and a modified bolt and gas system, the gun would work with both the 45 Win Mag and the 50 Action Express. Magazines are modified from staggered column to straight feed. A 15-round magazine holds 6 rounds of 45 Win Mag and 5 rounds of the 50 AE. Issue sights coarsely correspond to the other round's trajectories. What I developed was the ultimate guide gun, remarked Legendry. I sell a lot of these guns to guides in Alaska and bush pilots. The first guns were chambered in 45 Win Mag and are now available in 50 AE. Anywhere there's bears, you'll find some forward-thinking guys with my guns, said Legendry matter-of-factly. From a distance, it's impossible to distinguish a Lamag carbine from the GI-issued rifles. Only looking at the gaping muzzle or into the tunnel-like chamber lets one know that they are handling something out of the ordinary. The legendary Jeff Cooper once wrote, The Mag-1 carbine, built by Le Mag, outclasses all personal small arms in use by armies of the world today. That's a pretty heady endorsement by anyone's standards. Indeed, Legendry claims that his Mag-1 carbines are in use with several ultra-elite military groups. 
I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you, comes the standard reply. We've had nothing but good comments from the troops in the field who have used my weapons. They like them because they're so light and easy to carry, but they really love their effectiveness on warm-blooded targets. Although Legendary redesigned the gas cylinder, its function was not changed. I changed the gas system to increase the dwell time, or the amount of time that the bolt stays locked after firing. That's something that gave the army fits, and they never did get it completely figured out, but I did, boasted Legendry. The gaping muzzles are the easiest way to distinguish between the 30 carbine and the LeMag conversions. From left to right, the 50 AE, 45 Win Mag, and the 30 carbine. Like the original carbine, the LeMag's conversion's most important attributes are their light weight and excellent balance. Like Hendry's hybrid cartridge, the 45 Professional is shown alongside a 223 round. The case is made by cutting down 284 Winchester brass. I sell a lot of these guns to guides in Alaska and bush pilots. Recoil is one of the things that comes immediately to mind when someone is told of the rifle's chambering. Though heavier kicking than the 30 carbine, the 45 Win Mag is by no means punishing. Because of the gas system, the recoil impulse is spread over a long time and feels more like a push than a punch. I'd say it felt comparable to the Marlin Camp Gun and 45 ACP. I found the rifle very controllable and shot a 4-inch group from the sitting position at 100 yards. My test gun wore a Choate synthetic stock, which features a more reasonable length of pull than the puny M1s and a Leupold 4X scope. On the other hand, the 50 AE rifle in its standard issue wood stock is a kicker. I'd estimate that the barrel had at least a 45 degree lift when fired. I used a past recoil shoulder pad and was still bruised a week later. 14 shots into my evaluation, the stock of the 50 cracked from the tang to the wrist. We modify those stocks by glass bedding the lugs in place, and if there's the tiniest flaw, it will crack, said Legendry. But what the heck. The stocks only cost something like $7.50, so we're not taking a significant investment, right? And to be honest, I prefer the Choate's synthetic stocks. Legendry told me that he currently has two different styles of gas systems. The 45 Win Mag came with the long stroke system, and the 50 had a short stroke gas system. The piston's length is the only real difference between the two. Legendry tells me that the long stroke is eminently more controllable. We're still experimenting with the 50, but the ones that I've fitted with the long stroke system are so controllable I can double tap a target at 50 yards. I can double tap an ISPC target at 50 yards with the 50 AE. I wanted you to see the difference between the two systems. I thought of his consideration every time I looked at my bruised shoulder in the mirror. I didn't complete my accuracy testing of the 50 as I had the gun for just one weekend and did not have the opportunity to switch out the stock with the 45 Win Mag. My impression is that the gun has an acceptable level of accuracy for iron sight work under 100 yards. This is an up close and personal type of weapon, and I doubt that it would need to be deployed at extended distances. Like the original carbine, its most admirable features are its lightweight and short, handy length. Both carbines suffered from severe failure to feed jams. Basically, the rounds were feeding too high, and the bullet nose would run into and stop at the receiver bridge. I asked Legendary about the feeding problems. I tried to get you out a set of guns as soon as possible and didn't take my ordinary procedure of final testing the guns with the magazines because I know that you're a gun guy and would be able to figure out any problems that you might have, he said. From what I could tell, it looked like the magazine lips were releasing the rounds too early. I think the problem might be cured by gently squeezing the two lips together. Both calibers had flat pointed bullets, and I'm sure that the round nose bullets would enhance their feeding. After returning the two carbines to Legendry, he called me with a proposition. Seems like a sheriff in Louisiana needed a weapon that would stop vehicles with one shot. Hey Mikey, how'd you like me to ship you an M14 semi-auto that I've converted to 338 Winchester Magnum? 338? I murmured. Yep, how about a 250 grain bullet sizzling at something like 3,000 feet per second? What you think? Will that float your boat? Quizzed Legendry. 5,000 foot-pounds of energy enough to give you that warm, fuzzy feeling? Sure, Tim, go ahead and send me the gun. I said, my thoughts clouded by the enormity of putting such a huge cartridge in a relatively compact package. After converting the AR-16 from 223 to 45 Professional, the magazines become straight feet rather than staggered. 
Both carbines suffered from failures to feed. Working with the magazine lips would likely cure the problem. Legendry modernizes the 57-year-old carbine by converting it to a 45 Win Mag and dressing the gun with a Choate synthetic stock. This gun was fitted with a Leupold 4X scope. After only 14 rounds of 50 AE, the stock cracked from tang to wrist. Legendry usually replaces the original with a synthetic stock. After hanging up with him, I thought for a moment. I could picture Legendry sitting around with a bunch of friends. Let's have some fun with a stupid gun rider down in Arizona. A long package arrived at my home several days later. Sure enough, it was an M14, albeit an ugly one. Replete with visible welds, splashes of cold bluing here and there, and uh, holes and patches in the fiberglass stock, there was something about it that didn't seem quite right. <laughs> then I noticed that the rifle was fitted with, an, uh, with a Garand-type feed system, receiver and trigger group. Sometimes you need to take a step backwards to move forward, explained Legendary when I called him up. I had to fit that rifle with the uh, Garand feed because the 338's length is too long to fit in an M14 magazine. The issue Garand end block clip holds five rounds very neatly. Legendry has just developed a new version that uses BAR magazines that hold eight rounds of 338. Unfortunately, I did not have the opportunity to test the magazine fed weapon. I used a past recoil shoulder shield to protect my arthritic shoulder, but truth be known, I couldn't tell much difference between this rifle and my issue M1 Garand in 30 odd six. I fired 20 rounds through the rifle and was impressed to have so much raw power in such a controllable package. Perhaps the most impressive thing about the gun is not its accuracy, cosmetics, or power, but the fact that it works. Legendry has also performed similar conversions to 458 Winchester Magnum, and he tells me they work every bit as well as a 338. In 1994, Legendry had the opportunity to meet Eugene Stoner, the prolific firearms designer who invented the M16, at the SHOT Show in Dallas. At the time, Legendry was building a prototype weapon based on the AR-15 that fired a round made by cutting down a 284 Winchester rifle round to 1.77 inches and seeding a 45 230 grain FMJ RN bullet to the same overall length as the 223 cartridge. The load leaves the barrel at just under 3,000 feet per second. Stoner told him that it couldn't be done. That action isn't big enough to handle around the size you're talking about, Stoner patiently explained. Undaunted, Legendry persisted. Stoner cut him off. Look, it can't be done. You'll need a bigger bolt, which means you'll need a bigger carrier. A bigger carrier means a bigger upper, said Stoner, still shaking his head. Legendry returned from the show and immediately went to his workshop. Although he didn't yet have a barrel with the 45 bore size, he reamed the chamber of a standard barrel for the new cartridge. As dawn was breaking, Legendry loaded a dummy round into the standard AR-15 magazine and locked it in place. Pulling back the charging handle and letting it fly forward, the round was stripped from the magazine and slid neatly into the chamber. Now came the big test. Would it extract and eject? The round skittered across the workshop floor as he pulled the charging handle back. Another paradigm busted. Like the carbines, this AR-15 uses standard magazines with the lips modified. A 20-round magazine holds 8 rounds of fat cartridges. 30-round mags hold 12. Legendary named the round the 45 Professional and thinks that this particular weapon would be ideal for the professional guide who would run into dangerous game. Short, lightweight, and easy handling, the 45 Pro would be very hard to beat in the bush, and it's easy to imagine a number of scenarios where this would be the perfect tactical weapon. Like the other rifles, my test gun was a prototype. I casually pen it at 50 yards and was rewarded with a 2-inch group. Indeed, the remarkable thing about this weapon was not its accuracy, but again, the fact that it worked, and fired those great big bullets. The author found the Mag-14 in 338 Winchester Magnum to be extremely controllable and almost pleasant to shoot. A mix of M1 Garand and M14 parts were used in the rifle. The Garand clip neatly holds five 338 rounds. Tim Legendry, right, designed the Mag-14 rifle. An apprentice, Bob Gardner, built this particular rifle. Current Mag-14s are built using BAR magazines that hold eight rounds of 338 Winchester Magnum. 